Hello and praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Sunday and happy Pentecost Sunday. This is the day that we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit onto the church. Can I get an amen? Before we start, let's just open in a word of prayer. Will you just take a moment, just wherever you are, just to stop and get centered and really posture yourself to hear this word from God and to receive everything that God has for us today, all right? So let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give you all praise. We give you all glory. Lord, if we haven't taken a minute in our week, we just want to take a minute and just worship you. Just want to adore you. Just want to just to sit at your feet on today. We thank you for the Way Christian Center. We thank you for an opportunity to fellowship together, even if it's online. God, we pray that you would do a work, God, in our hearts and in our minds. Not only in us, God, in our communities, God, the gun violence. Lord, we're lifting up our brothers and sisters in Palestine. There's so much going on in this world, and that's why we need your Holy Spirit like never before. So, God, do something special in our hearts today. We love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, and thank God. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us virtually once again and we're just so excited for this word um, we are talking today about this is our our topic today a personal pentecost all right a personal pentecost that is our subject on today but i have a complaint i have a complaint y'all who know me who those who have heard me speak before i have a complaint i would like to file a formal complaint with whoever runs the holiday review board, whoever is in charge of holidays, I have a complaint. I'm gonna write a strongly worded email because I feel like Pentecost gets gypped. That's right, there's no big celebration for Pentecost. I, I don't know what happened to Pentecost. It's the most amazing holiday and we do like nothing for it, like okay, we do Christmas. Christmas is the thing. We get gifts and we celebrate Jesus's birth. And then Easter, all the things. We dress up. Jesus is risen. We get chocolate and jelly beans. That's the thing. But what happened to Pentecost? Like, where is the thing? This should be the greatest celebration. Like, if that, if that, it's the, it completes the trilogy. Christmas, Easter, Pentecost is like the best sequels ever. It's, it's like the after party. Everybody loves a great after party. This is the day we celebrate the birthday of the church. So in the chat, can you just put happy birthday church or put some, put some emojis, party emojis, a hat emoji, the little guy blowing the horn, something we need to pe celebrate Pentecost. We do Pentecost shady. And I think it's time to give Pentecost its just dues. Can I get an amen? Are y'all with me? This should be a turn up day. I don't know why it's not. I'm writing my letter. So when you first hear the word Pentecost, really, what comes to mind? I don't know if you if you grew up in church, you might re, this might be like a cool day, like yeah, Pentecost. If you didn't go to church or you went to some churches that were a little, you don't know what was happening when you went in. Pentecost could you know make you feel a little tight, right? There's some people when they when they first think of Pentecost, what came to mind? Did you think about organs? Did you think about shouting? Did you think about tambourine? I wish I had my, I need my tambourine. Did you think about church fans? What, did you think about anything like that when you first hear the word Pentecost? Um, some people, like I said, get a little uptight when you first hear the word Pentecost because if you're more of the intellectual or cerebral type, you kind of equate Pentecost maybe with emotionalism, um, maybe with a feeling of goosebumps or sensation or something takes over you and strange things happen. And if you're kind of a chill person, that's just not your vibe. Like, yeah, no, 
Maybe that's why Pentecost is not getting this just dues. Like sometimes it's if you're kind of one of those people like, I don't really know, maybe you've seen movies, parodies. It looks like the Holy Spirit makes you do weird things. I'm kind of cool, right? That's weird. We have, we have the whole spectrum of when you first hear the word Pentecost. But my brothers and my sisters, my goal, the goal of this sermon is to convince you that Pentecost is one of the greatest events that has ever happened in our lifetime. The greatest event that has ever happened in human history, dare I say. And I want to show you how it relates to your life. All right? I want to show you how you can have a personal Pentecost. Can someone put that in the comments? A personal Pentecost. Pentecost. If that's what you want, and even if you're not, if you're kind of unsure, I still want you to say it with me, a personal Pentecost. All right, so let's dive right in. What is Pentecost? Well, it's more than a feeling, and it's more than a denomination. Uh, by the way, the Way Christian Center is a Pentecostal church. Um, if you did um, sign up to be in a way and you're a member and you didn't know that, congratulations, you're Pentecostal. Yes, we are a Pentecostal church. And uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about the history of Pentecost. Pentecost is actually a Greek word transliterated into English that means 50th, all right? Pente, 50th. And it kind of celebrates the day from the day that Israel left Egypt all right, until 50 days until the law was given. So once the children of Israel left Egypt, 50 days later, they arrived at Mount Sinai where the law was given. And if you could read this for yourself, boy, this topic is so amazing. I, I, I could be here all day, but I would love for you to read it yourself. It's in Exodus 19. It's the day when God gave out the law. And you know, God has a flair for the amazing and the inaugural day was it was literally lit there was like smoke at the mountain and fire and trumpet sounds from heaven it was a lot and the people were like yeah it's a lot Moses can you just talk to us because God is a lot so uh, read it for yourself it's really a great read that's Exodus 19 but um, when God was giving out this law he was giving out all the feasts and how you were to commemorate and celebrate. So this feast was actually supposed to be implemented when they went into the promised land. So this feast fell on the 50th day after Passover. Y'all remember Passover? It's the second major Jewish feast called the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Ingathering. This is the time when they would gather the winter wheat in the spring that was ready for harvest. The feast was marked by them taking a portion of their field and harvesting it. The priests would take the sheaves, wave it before the Lord, and offer it as first fruits unto God. And as was the custom of all the Jewish feasts, there would be Jews that gathered from all over the world to celebrate. So that is actually that the real feast of Pentecost. So now, I'm going to see if you were listening. I have a pop quiz for you. So Jesus died on Passover. Y'all remember? Read, read the Bible. You'll see it for yourself in the gospel. Jesus died at Passover. Okay. After that, he appeared 40 days after he died and rose again to his disciples, according to Acts chapter 1. According to the Jewish calendar, what was going to happen 10 days later? 40, 10, 50, Pentecost. Congratulations. You got an A. Good job. Good job to you and you and you. So let me just read really quick in Acts 1 and 3. It says, after, this is Jesus, after suffering, he presented himself and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. And he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but what? Wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
I like to submit to you that the disciples had no idea what they were waiting for. Jesus was like, hey, before you go out and do it, I need you just to wait. I need you to wait on a gift. Wait on a promise. They had no, no idea even what to expect. Have you ever had to wait for a gift? Do you remember when you were little and maybe your parents or someone you love promised you something? You're going to get X, Y, and Z, and you just have to wait on it. Do you remember the, the anticipation? How do you wait? Are you, a, are, are you a person that waits well, or are you anxious? Are you asking a lot of questions? Are you just wanting to know all the things? Do you need to be in control? It's important how you wait. And I so appreciate Minister Adrian's uh, message last week to stay in the conversation while you're waiting. So the apostles and the, the disciples, the disciples were actually maintaining a posture of ex expectation. In Acts 114, it says that they joined together constantly in prayer. For that period of 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven, no other, no other uh, instructions were given but just to wait. It matters how you wait. This is a whole nother sermon, but I love the way they waited. They waited in a posture of prayer. How are you waiting on the promises of God? All right, we going, that's a whole nother subject, but let's now, let's read what happened. Let's read what happened in Acts 2. Y'all following with me? All right, Acts 2. It says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled. They were all filled. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What happened next was unprecedented. I like to call it, it, it was the original earth, wind, and fire. Now, I'm not talking about the band from 1970 that I love so much. And I, by the way, I know every word of every Earth, Wind & Fire song, but that's not the point right now. I'm talking about the original Earth, Wind & Fire when heaven came to earth and there was wind and there was fire. Amen. This is what happened. Let's walk through what happened on one of the greatest days of history, on the birthday of the church, on the day that the church was born. As you can tell, I'm excited. I, this is, I could talk about this all day, but we're not going to be here all day. It says in verse 1 that it was suddenly, it says suddenly, Okay, so if this is the birth, the, this is the inaugural day of the church, and this is the church's birthday, it's a surprise party. It's a suddenly. God came with a suddenly. And I love this about the Holy Ghost because there was no striving. They didn't have to work up emotions. All they did was be obedient and just wait and pray and have a, a heart of expected. Like Jesus said, he's going to give us a gift. we waiting on our gift. All right? There was no working. There was no... Um, begging. There was no strife. I want, really want you to let that sink in when it comes to your relationship with the Holy Ghost. You don't have to beg. You don't have to ask or strive or really work yourself up into a frenzy for Jesus to come into the room. Whatever God's going to do, God does it suddenly. I love that so much. It says, suddenly there came from heaven a sound a sound like a mighty rushing wind. In other translations, it says like a violent wind or a rushing mighty windstorm. Now, this is very perplexing to me. Follow along with me, because if you read here, it's not actually a real windstorm. Like their hair wasn't blowing around and all their clothes were. That wasn't what happened. Read carefully. It says there was a sound like a sound that came from heaven. First of all, 
It came from heaven. It wasn't manufactured. There wasn't a soundtrack. There wasn't. There were some things that man cannot produce that only God can do. This sound came from heaven, reminiscent of um, Exodus 19, when there was a sound of trumpet, a blast, a strong blast that came from heaven. This is so amazing to me. The sound of a rushing, mighty, violent wind. I don't know if you've ever been in a windstorm or a hurricane. Once you hear a sound like that, you'll never forget it. And I'm wondering, was this sound perhaps reminiscent to the disciples? You know, on several occasions, they got caught on a boat somewhere in the middle of a storm. And I love in Mark, the, the account in Mark when Jesus walked on water, they were actually in a windstorm. It was the storm that they were resisting and they were paddling. They were coming up against wind. I'm wondering if this sound was familiar to the disciples. Do they remember? Was this Jesus being like, hey, y'all remember that time? There was a windstorm, a sound of wind. And we know what happens every time Jesus appears in a storm. He speaks peace to it. I wonder if this was reminiscent of them. There was a rushing sound. It arrested their attention. It directed their minds to the phenomenon that was so unusual and so unaccounted for. Where is the sound coming from? It's coming from heaven. And I love it was a wind. It is reminiscent of the of back in Genesis of creation when God breathed the breath of life. It's the Ruach of God, the very breath of life that came into Adam. And it got breathed and it became a living being. This is God's inaugural time when God is breathing life into a church. He breathes life into it with the Ruach, with the wind of God, and it comes to life. This is why we celebrate Pentecost. This is the day the church came to life. Can I get an amen? So there was a sound from heaven, a wind. And then something else more, even more perplexing happens. There was fire. And it says there were divided tongues of fire. So I'm imagining that it starts off as one flame and it just begins to divide and rest upon each one of them. This always perplexes me because... How can fire and wind exist in the same place? Have you, you know, usually that's a recipe for disaster. Usually if you're, uh, I don't know if you've ever been trying to camp or light birthday candles at a, a windy park, those two just don't go together. Or the wind accelerates the flame and causes a, a, a wildfire. These two usually don't go, but we have them in the same room and, and a fire begin to sit upon each one of them. Just imagine that. Each flame sat upon each one. It says in some, some translations that it rested upon each one of them. How many want the Holy Spirit to rest on them, just to sit just to make the Holy Spirit make yourself comfortable. Sit down on me. I want the Holy Ghost to sit on me, just like it happened. So these divided flames begin to sit in each one of them. And this is so amazing to me because instead of the fire resting like at Mount Sinai on the mountain, God chose to rest upon each of the disciples which is amazing because fire always represents cleansing, always represents the presence of God, always represents God being among us, the fire of God. Someone says, someone say the fire of God. All right, so we have suddenly, we have a sound from heaven. We have fire. And then something amazing happens in the verse. It says, they were all filled. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. They were all filled. I want to just stop right there. They were all feel, filled because this is where the shout comes in. Are y'all ready for the shout? They were all filled. Now, previously in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would make very, lots of appearances in the Old Testament, but each time the Holy Spirit appeared, it would just rest the Holy Spirit would just rest upon someone 
and they would be activated for a service or a miracle or something amazing, and then the Holy Spirit would lift. So in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would just rest on someone for service, for action, for miracles, for you know, like Samson, you know, doing the, the walls. The, something amazing would happen, miracles would happen, but the key was when it was over, the Holy Spirit would leave. The Holy Spirit would, would, would come off of them. So here we have, for the first time in human history, by the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will now, in an unprecedented move, will never leave, but would fill an individual, not only just resting, not only just sitting, but for the first time ever, the Holy Spirit would dwell will stay, will live, will feel a person who believed in Jesus and through the blood of Jesus and now have access to the Father. It was amazing. This has never happened in the history of mankind. This is what God has always wanted. This is why the temple was built. This is why God, God needed an answer. How can I dwell with men? How can I still be with them even though they're sinful? This is where Jesus comes in and takes our place. By the blood of Jesus, we are now have access to God. And for the first time in human history, the Holy Spirit fills individuals. Never to lift, never to leave, but to stay. I think that is amazing. Can someone just say hallelujah? This is why I don't understand why this is not a bigger day. We need to do something. This should be a whole. I'm going to leave that alone. All right. So the last thing I'm going to say on this verse, we could spend the whole time right on this verse. There was a suddenly, there was wind, a sound of wind. There was fire. They were filled. And then they begin to speak. They begin to speak. This is so important. Acts 2 and 5. Let's take a look at it. It says, now, this is right after the Holy Spirit fell. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every, from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, at this sound, they heard the sound. The multitude came together and were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? And then it goes to give all the regions that were represented. Check it, because there's a lot of regions from Africa in that list. You can read that on your own time. It says, We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? This is so amazing because they were filled, but they weren't filled just to get goosebumps. They weren't filled just to be like, ooh, that was fun. Ooh, that, man, Holy Spirit is amazing. Like, ooh, we, let's just all get together, just all of us, and like do this again, and it just stays in this, in this four, in this room, in these four walls. That's not the purpose of for them to be filled. The Holy Spirit gave them power to do something that was impossible. It was impossible for these Galileans. And this is why they even mentioned it. Like, Aren't these the Galileans? These are people who are uneducated from like the country. Like if Jerusalem was the city, Galilee was the country. Backwards people, working class people, people who were uh, fishermen and, and stonemasons. Like this is just a regular blue collar. How do they know these languages? When did they go to school? How did they, like, they, it was amazing. People were like, how do they know my language? I know where they, they from down the street. And they haven't even traveled to where I'm from. And this is why this is so amazing, because Jesus had told these same people, hey, I want you to go and preach the gospel to every nation. And I know they were probably like, okay, cool, 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 cool. We're going to preach the gospel to every nation. I only know one language. This is how Jesus solved that problem. He said, I'm going to empower you to speak in a way where people can hear the mighty works of God in their own language. This is a miracle because they weren't filled just for filling's sake. They were filled 
for somebody else. They were given a gift for somebody else. So this is my question. Who around you need to hear the gospel in the way that they can understand? Who around you needs to hear about the mighty works of God in a way that they can understand? What love language are we speaking to people? Are we speaking the universal language of love towards people? How do, are our lives declaring the mighty works of God so that anybody could see it, anybody can hear it, anybody can understand it? This is what the Holy Spirit empowers us to do. Now, as I close, my friends, this is where our title comes in. This is where a personal Pentecost comes in. This is almost like Christmas. This is the birthday party where you get the gift. I don't know how that happened at Christmas because we're supposed to celebrate Jesus and then we all get gifts, what, whatever. This is, the, this is the nice friend that you go to and they have a party and they give out gifts for people. Like this is that. This is the party where you get a gift. What is the gift? Acts 2. Acts 2.37. This is after when Peter is trying to explain to the group what had just happened. Peter says in verse 37, 2.37, Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Who is this gift for? For the promise is for you and for your children and for all those who are far off. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Who is this gift for? This gift is for everyone. Now, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a common practice. Wait, 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 wait. This gift is for everyone. One more verse. Acts 2, 17 and 18. It says, in the last days, this comes from the book of Joel too. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on who? All people. Your sons, your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Who is this gift for? Who is available for everyone? And I love that they add, especially for those who are far off, especially those who don't go to church, especially for those who never thought that this would be for them. This is who this was for. Now, it is our custom, our Western custom, if you go to a party, that you should bring a gift, right? And if you were to receive a gift, it would be so rude to not open the gift. It's like unheard of. If someone like, like, oh, I got you this amazing gift. I picked it out by hand and I just can't wait for you to open it. And then they check in on you like two weeks later, like, oh my gosh, did you open the gift? It would be unheard of and rude to be like, ah, gift. I didn't get around to it. I'm, I'm going to get to it. I, I'll open it. That would be like, what? I handpicked this for you. Like, this is how I feel the Holy gift feels, the Holy Spirit feels about us. The Holy Spirit gives us this gift. It's a gift. You literally, all you have to do is receive it, and we leave it unwrapped. Have you unwrapped the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you have a gift that is still unwrapped under the tree? Do you remember that? That was devastating as a kid. Do you, we left no gifts unwrapped. There is no way that three weeks from then you're like, oh, by the way, there's a gift. No. Why do we do the Holy Spirit like you have a gift that you need to unwrap and it's direct access to God by Jesus through the Holy Spirit. You have a gift. We now, each one of us, can have our own perpetual Pentecost. What is we can have is not just a museum experience. It's not something that you read about that happened thousands of years ago. It's an experience that you can have every day. Every day God has given you access to him through the Holy Spirit. How do we, how do we access it? How do we get this? How do we experience a personal Pentecost every day? First of all, let God breathe 
on you. Let God breathe on your dreams. Let God breathe on your heart, your mind, your spirit. Let the Ruach of God fill your heart and your mind. I love this because even wind, if you think about it, people use those power mowers. And wind kind of gets things out the way and blows things out the way that shouldn't be. No, everyone loves a fresh breeze, a fresh air. Do you need refreshing in your life? Will you just believe God for the wind to come into your life? And secondly, let the fire of God rest on you. Our God is an all-consuming fire. That means once you come to God, like, it's all in. God is all in. Will you be all in with God? Will you let God's fire cleanse you? When, you, when, you, when you're purifying something, fire brings things to the surface that doesn't need to be there. Fire cleanses you. Fire takes away everything that's not supposed to be there. Will you let the fire of God rest on you? Now, sometimes we ask us, yes, fire fall, but then things get a little hot in our lives, and we're like, God, take the fire off. But will you be willing to let the fire of God purify your heart, your mind, your emotions, your motives? Come on, let's ask God for the wind. Ask God for the fire. And then thirdly, let God fill you continually. It's a perpetual Pentecost. It's for you. Now, this is not a one and done thing. Like, I said it one time, I asked one time, and I'm good for life. No, this is just like you have that pitcher of water in your, in your refrigerator, and every time you're thirsty, you, pull, you pour it in, and you, and you take a drink. It's a, it's a perpetual feeling. God wants to feel you not once, but many times. This is an experience that you can have over and over again. This is something that's just not in the archives of history, but something that you can do and experience every day, a personal Pentecost. Now I want you to notice one thing as I close. I know, I think this is my second closing. But as I close, I want you to notice one thing about this account. Nothing about this account was silent. None of this just happened in their minds. Like, Holy Spirit, yes, I, yes. None of that just happened in our mind. Something happens. When you are seeking, not an expression, not the expression, when you're seeking Jesus with all your heart, and when you ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, when you're not seeking necessary uh, an expression, you're not seeking a shout, you're not seeking, you know, to, to uh, have some kind of outward expression, but when you lock into the realization that Jesus, what Jesus did for you on the cross, when you start thinking about how Jesus provided access for you, when you start thinking about all the things that God has done for you and how the Holy Spirit will give you the power to live out this Christian life something begins to happen on the inside of you and you begin to feel something in your hands and you begin to feel something in your feet and it makes you want to jump and it makes you want to run and it makes you want to shout not because you're trying to do be weirder it's just like fire in your bones you can't help it there's something tangible that happens in the spirit because the spirit world is real this is something that our ancestors knew our ancestors were tapped in to the spirit world. They knew that there was more than what we can see. There's more in the spirit realm than what we can see. And they learned how to tap into it through music, through dancing, through shouting, through speaking in a, in a heavenly tongue. Like all these things are so real. And I want you, I want to invite you to open yourself up, not to sensationalism, but just the, the thought of everything that Jesus has done for you. There's something tangible. There's something that you can feel because because the Holy Spirit is real that will just make you be expressive, not for expressive sake, not for emotionalism's sake, but you just can't contain in your mortal body what the Spirit is doing for you on the inside. So can we just take a moment this is, the pen, this is Pentecost. This is the day that we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Can we take a moment just to worship? 
Can we do that? I know that you're at home or you're probably cooking or you got people around. Can we just take a moment, even if you're in your car, if you're listening to, to this at a later time, can we just take a moment and just begin to worship God? Can we just thank God for this day of Pentecost? I know it hasn't been celebrated the way it should be, but this is our opportunity to say thank you. This is our time to say, you know what, God, I come to you and I want you to fill me afresh. God, I want to experience the outpouring of your Holy Spirit over and over again. God, I'm not seeking an expression. I'm not seeking a shout. I'm not seeking to do anything else, but what I do want is more of your spirit. I want the wind to blow afresh in my life. I want the fire of God to rest on me. I want to be able to speak in a way that people can understand that, that you love them and understand that you are wonderful and understand that you are marvelous because of my life. God, will you fill me afresh? Come on, let's just take a moment just to worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for falling. We thank you for breathing life into the church. And we thank you that you're breathing life into us. God, we receive it. God, I just thank you that even while people are watching in their homes, on their couches, as they're driving, that you are doing something new in their hearts. You are doing something new in their lives, and they can feel you. They know that you're real. They can feel that you are doing something on the inside, God. We celebrate you. We say thank you. Can someone just join me and say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, next week... I'll be back and I want to talk about, we're going to do part two. I want to talk about hosting the presence of God, hosting the presence of God. What does that mean? Even though we're not able to gather the way we want as a community, I think there's a lesson that this pandemic is talking, is teaching us. And that's something that we should tap into is how to host the presence of God wherever you are. Join me next week. I'll be so glad to, to, to lock in with you and remember to experience the Holy Spirit every day with your own personal Pentecost. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you.